Немаловажным фактором для развития туризма в любой стране является наличие автомобильных дорог. Good roads is an important factor for the development of tourism in any country. You won't face such a problem if you're planning a trip to southern Kazakhstan. I'm standing near the Western Europe, Western China Highway, which starts in the Russian city of St. Petersburg and ends in the Chinese city of Liangyunggang. Its length is 8.5 thousand kilometers, and a 2700 meter road section runs across Kazakhstan. This is a first-class four-lane highway built of concrete and asphalt. Hello, this is the Terrain Cognita project. My name is Anton Fyodorov, and I continue to explore the ancient cities and learn the legends of southern Kazakhstan. И узнавать легенды Южного Казахстана. And today I will tell you about the modern Great Silk Road, which partially passes through the territory of Kazakhstan and connects Europe with Asia. I will also visit the Aksu Jabagli Reserve and show you its natural beauties. We will also visit the ruins of the ancient city of Otrar, which is known for numerous victories. Kazakhstan has an advantageous geographical position on the Eurasian continent. The country is the connecting bridge between Europe and Asia. This advantage encourages the development of transport infrastructure in the country. The Western Europe, Western China route has become perhaps one of the largest construction projects in the history of independent Kazakhstan. It fulfills an important integration function, linking the economies of European and Asian states. Today it is safe to say that all the tasks assigned to it are completed. Tens of thousands of trucks are delivered worldwide every day. It takes 10 days to travel along this road from start to finish, from St. Petersburg to Lianyungang. One needs to move along the road by car at an average speed of 100 km per hour. By the way, the highway has sections without the speed limit. 10 days is the shortest time period for which you can almost completely cross the Eurasian continent. Previously, this could be done along the Sea Corridor over 45 days or along the Trans-Siberian Railway, which takes 14 days of travel. The most interesting thing in the history of this highway is that its construction began in 2008 during the global financial crisis. But Kazakhstan, despite the collapsed global market, found the resources and strength to implement this large project, providing local construction companies with work and creating excellent conditions for further economic growth. Today, the volume of freight traffic on this highway exceeds 33 million tons per year. The Western Europe, Western China route is the modern embodiment of the Great Silk Road. Many centuries ago, camel caravans loaded with goods traveled across this land and now heavy trucks with goods are driving along the same way. But I moved a little away from the main task of my trip, the study of ancient cities in the south of Kazakhstan. So I turn off the international road onto a country road that will lead me to one of such settlements. My study of the ancient cities of southern Kazakhstan led me to the small village of Sharaf Kant of Tulkabaz district in Turkestan region. Only 170 families live here. I learned that once there was an ancient city with the same name, Sharaf Kant. 
на участке Великого Шелкового Пути. It was one of the largest settlements on the Great Silk Road. Sharif Kent was a developed city. It was famous for the pottery masters in the 5th century AD. Наши эры превосходно владели гончарным искусством. I learned about the existence of a prosperous ancient city in the vicinity of this village from several publications on the internet. There is few information about Shar of Kent. Nothing is left from this settlement. Some items saved from the once glorious city are kept in the local school museum which is being managed by historian Gulbakram Sarmanova, who kindly agreed to tell me about what ancient Shar of Kent was known for. Jugs were made here. Residents of the ancient city took sand from Balikti Lake, Aris River, for clay, and made such large jugs. When the museum opened in our school, the locals brought these jugs from the places where the ancient city once stood. They did this to preserve history, so that our children would know that there used to be such a glorious city, sure of Kent. And because of this, we have collected here these jugs. According to one version, Sharaf Kent appeared in the 5th century, then it was called Buduk Kent. By the 9th, 10th centuries, a large and modern city already existed in these places. Archaeologists have worked here twice. The first time it was in the late 40s of the last century, the second in 1987. Artifacts discovered by scientists have become a real sensation. Specialists were able to establish that the high walls of the ancient Shah of Kent were built of burnt bricks. There was a whole quarter in the city with craft workshops, a residential area, a mint, pottery kilns for ceramics, huge millstones for grinding grain. Craftsmen produced home and kitchen utensils, women's jewelry, wine storage rooms, jugs, oil lamps and even musical instruments. Everything that was found on the site of Sharaf Kent is kept in the museum. Therefore, all the exhibits located here are originals that keep the centuries-old history of the glorious city. Here, right in the middle of our village, the Great Silk Road passed. The city of Shah of Kent was revived. Legends say that they prepared wine from grapes, and in Kazakh, wine is Sharap. That is why the city was called Shah of Kent. Ancient Shah of Kent was a rich and highly developed city. Its inhabitants even built a real water supply system. From the nearby lake, Balik Tikol, the city received drinking water. But the happiness and well-being of Shah of Khan did not last long. In the 13th century, the terrible Genghis Khan came to this land. He conquered many cities except Shah of Kent. However, the great conqueror did not stop and ordered a siege. Genghis Khan was sure that people left without water and food would beg for mercy very soon, but miscalculated. The townspeople possessed large reserves of all that was necessary for life in isolation. The blockade lasted three months and the inhabitants of the city could still stand for it. further it was, not for one case. One of the Mongol warriors swimming in Balik Tikal drew attention to the spinning swirl in the center of the lake. The soldier dived deeper and saw a water pipe. The warrior reported to his commander, Genghis Khan, ordered to plug this pipe. Water stopped flowing into Shah of Kent and the city fell. This ended the glorious history of Shah of Kent, but fortunately the school museum still has a memory of the once prosperous rich city. Well, it's interesting for me to look at the very Balik Tikal which supplied the ancient Shah of Kent with water. Many legends speak about the purity of this lake, and I am going to check whether this is really so.
Озеро Балыкты находится всего в нескольких километрах. Балыктыкали is located just a few kilometers from the village of Sharaf Kent. It is a small body of water, but it has a very long history. In the 5th century AD, this lake saved the ancient Shah of Kent from the Mongol siege. And in the 20s of the last century, this lake again came to the rescue of people and fed them with fish in the hungry years. Despite its small size, Baliktikal for many centuries has been the heart, filling this depleted of heat and frost land with life. Legends about this lake were narrated from generation to generation. Local residents claim that once there was so much fish that one could simply take it with bare hands. Such an amount of living creatures in the reservoir was due to the purity of the water of Baliktikal. Indeed, the water in Baliktikal Lake turned out to be crystal clear. There is no need an additional lighting or special cleaning filters to shoot underwater. The purity of the water in Baliktikal is explained by the fact that at the bottom of the lake there are about 130 springs, which constantly fill the reservoir with clean water. Therefore, the water temperature here, even in summer, does not exceed 4 to 5 degrees. This natural purity of water gives the lake an amazing color cast. Baliktikan, like a huge emerald, spilled across the boundless Kazakh steppe, forming a real oasis in these ancient places. The beauty of Baliktikan Lake can be admired endlessly. This place is like a cradle, comes and fills with harmony. Now I understand why Genghis Khan wanted to take these lands. Well, I continue my journey and go to a new interesting place. Traveling through southern Kazakhstan and exploring its ancient history, I admired all beauties of this region. And now, I came to one very interesting place. At first glance, nothing special, just a bare step around me. However, it is not so. Just a 30-minute drive from Shimkent is a real natural pearl of this region. This is the Aksu Canyon. The canyon got this name because of the river flowing along its bottom. Aksu in translation from Kazakh means white water. The river acquired this color due to calcareous deposits on its banks. The canyon is located on the territory of the Aksu Jabagli Nature Reserve, one of the oldest and first reserves in Central Asia. In this amazingly beautiful place, you can meet rare and endangered species of animals. 
These are mountain goats and dargali, snow leopards and lynxes, wolves and foxes, porcupines and bears, as well as many other local inhabitants. The Aksu Canyon has the length of approximately 30 kilometers, its depth reaches 500 meters, and the distance between the upper edges of the canyon is 800 meters. The walls of the canyon are composed of stone formations from sediments of an ancient lake. With several ledges, they descend to the bed of a stormy and full-flowing river, the water of which is always very cold since it was formed as a result of melting glaciers. На дно каньона можно спуститься вот по такой узкой расщелине. You can go down to the bottom of the canyon along such a narrow crevice. Here two elements are opposing, water and stone. И в итоге камень уступил, потому что вода реки Аксу пробила себе. And in the end, the stone lost because the water of the Aksu River is breaking through the road and centuries-old stone. Вековой камень. The beauty of this place is difficult to describe in words. Nature rewarded this canyon with some unusually warm sunlight, picturesquely painting foothill landscapes. So if you're traveling in the south of Kazakhstan, be sure to visit this place and enjoy the stunning fantasy of nature. go further to the ancient city of Otrar, which went down in the history of Kazakhstan. But to learn more about this settlement, first I need to visit a museum which stores unique artifacts from the life of this once flourishing city. The ancient city of Atrar is located on the ridge of Mount Karatau, in a valley of the confluence of the Aris and Serdarya rivers. The history of the city covers the period from the 1st to the 18th century. The existence of Atrar begins in the Stone Age and then continues in the Neolithic and Bronze Ages. There is an encampment, Kokmardan, where at the end of the 1st millennium BC and at the beginning of our era, the Karluk tribe lived. In those ancient times, Otrar was not one settlement but consisted of several cities. From 50 to 100 large and small settlements were located around this area. But now in these places you will see only small mounds and graves. The items that were found in the site of these cities are exhibited in our museum. Otrar is one of the oldest cities in Central Asia. The first settlements on this site appeared in the 8th century. The city began to develop rapidly as it was located on one of the main branches of the Silk Road. By the 12th century, it was already a large trade center for crafts and art. There were palaces, caravanserais and residential areas. In ancient times, Otra was called Farab, Turban and Tarband. These fortifications are now called the city of Otrar. At one time, the territory of Otrar occupied approximately 200 hectares, and now only mounds on the territory of about 20 hectares are left. In those days, the city of Otrar consisted of three parts. 
Rabat, Shakristan and the Citadel. The Rabat included forges, workshops and bazaars. In Shakristan there was the Palace of the Khan. Government officials and nobles lived here, and the Citadel featured a mosque, a madrasa, a library and a scientific center. All medieval travelers going from east to west certainly visited Otrar. Therefore, despite the fact that only ruins remain from the city, we have an idea of the former greatness of the medieval Otrar. Travelers described it as a large shopping center at the intersection of caravan routes with huge palaces, mosques and other architecture. The name of one of the most famous and outstanding philosophers of the East, Abu Nasser al-Farabi, who was born and raised in Otrar, is also associated with this city. Among his most famous works are translations of Aristotle and a treatise on the ideal city. As mentioned earlier, outstanding scientist Abu Nasser al-Farabi lived and worked in the city of Otrar. They say he knew more than 70 languages. He wrote a lot of treatises and works. His activity was not limited to only one industry. He simultaneously worked in several fields of science. At the beginning of the 13th century, Otrar was one of the largest cities in Central Asia. It was part of the Khorasm Shak Empire and was the northernmost city of this country. It housed the thousands of garrisons whose task was to protect the northern borders of the empire. That is, in those days, Otrar witnessed the production of not only ceramics, but also glass was well developed. There were centers for the production of drugs and tools. Various medical products were made of glass. Such valuable exhibits are shown in our museum. People knew Otrar as a strong fortress with brave people. People described Otrar with these words for a reason. In 2018, Genghis Khan sent a huge caravan of goods from conquered China by the ruler of the city, Inalchi Khan, by the orders of Khorizm Shak Muhammad, violated all laws of hospitality and killed the ambassadors of Genghis Khan. Thus, he sent the caravan with all goods to the city of Gurganj, the state capital. This incident triggered the start of a large-scale Mongol conquest in Central Asia. And now I'm going directly to the place where these historical events took place. I arrived at a site that plays a special role in Kazakh history. The periods of great achievements and deeds are associated with these places. School students learn about those events at history lessons in Kazakhstan. I came to Turkestan region where the city of Atrar was founded one and a half thousand years ago. The ruins of the city have been preserved in the south of Kazakhstan near the village of Talapti. Nearby is the modern city of Turkestan. Now there are only desert and hot winds at the place of Atrar. A lot of facts speak about the greatness of Otrar. Arabic and Chinese sources claim that this city had the second largest library in the world after the Alexandria Library, and it consisted of more than a thousand different volumes.
Otrar обладал полным. Otrar had a full-fledged urban infrastructure. This well testifies to this. Its depth is 20 meters. From the bottom of the well, 10 kilometers from here to the Sirdarya River, a clay water pipe was stretched. And the water of this river helped Otrar survive the difficult siege times and provide residents with drinking water for six months. The autonomous water supply system Otrar possessed greatly upset Genghis Khan's plans to conquer the city. The military leaders of the great ruler could not understand why the city had not surrendered for several months. And only after the invaders gassed to block the water supply, Otrar gave up. Otrar was a very developed city. Twice Otrar was subjected to a severe siege. Once from the Jungars, the second time from the side of Genghis Khan. At that time, 200,000 people lived in Otrar. Of them, 150,000 were civilians, 50 served in the army. And to conquer the city, Genghis Khan sent 200,000 of his soldiers. The city of Otrar existed for almost 2,000 years. In the 19th century, due to drought, people left it and the city gradually became empty and began to collapse. Its ruins were long in oblivion until 1969 when archaeological excavations began here. Many buildings were irretrievably lost, but archaeologists managed to discover some city blocks, mosques, a palace and a bathhouse. Otrar is not just an ancient city. Every stone here witnessed great events. Archaeologists still continue to excavate, hoping that one day they will be able to discover all the secrets of Otrar, covered in sand and hidden in the ground. South Kazakhstan region is very rich in history, and the deeper you study it, the more you're struck by the facts and events that took place here thousands of years ago. And if you want to get in touch with this ancient history, then you just need to make a trip to these places. Well, and I go further in search of new legends. It was the Terry Incognita Project. My name is Anton Fyodorov, and I'll see you in the next series.